tonight from London, the Emma and Andrew Show. Eamon's guests are Bernard Braden, Barbara Kelly, Ava Gabor, Joe Orton, The Bachelors, Vicky Carr. My last guest tonight is a young man whose two West End plays have both won awards. The second of them, which is still playing in London, is called Loot, and it's appropriately titled because £100,000 has just been paid for the film rights. It's quite a change of... <coughs> fortune for a young man who four years ago spent six months in jail. Joe Orton. Welcome, Joe. Well, as I was saying, you're a very successful writer now, but what about this business of spending six months in jail? It's something to do with library books, hasn't it? Um, well, yes, I used to um, do very strange things on library books. I, it was really a joke. I used to take lots of books out of the library and I used to smuggle them out in a satchel and uh, then I used to sort of paste a picture over the picture of the author so that when it would say, um, I remember one of them was about by Lady Lewisham I think and um, a book on etiquette actually and um, it showed a picture of Lady Lewisham or something in her garden and I painted a picture of or pasted a picture of um, a great nude woman cut from a nude book. <laughs> so it said Lady Lewisham, and um, people must have been very surprised. The woman is Lady Lewisham must have been very surprised. surprised. Yeah. Yeah. But it must have been very surprised. But why, surprised. Joe? What was the motive? Why did you do it? Oh, it's just a joke. I mean, I, well, also, I didn't like libraries anyway. I mean, I thought they spent far too much public money on rubbish. Um, I didn't like the books. I mean, I don't think people need books in etiquette anyway. So you, this was a kind of protest of the kind of books in the library? Oh, uh, yes, yes, really, it was. Do you, do, you, do you have any regret now for having done this? No regrets at all, no. no. I had a marvellous time in prison, so I mean... <laughs> so prison didn't cure your protest streak, then? No, not at all. I mean, it just meant that um, instead of annoying a few old ladies, you see, that opened the book, I now annoy hundreds of old ladies. By writing them? By writing plays. But of course, <laughs> Joe, Joe, in fact, what you did, of course, was putting nude pictures over Lady Lewisham. You just obviously raised the, the, the public going to the libraries looking for all those dirty pictures. Well, <laughs> so, in fact, you defeated your own purpose. Well, no, not really, because, I mean, the kind of people that would get out something like Lady Lewisham would be very surprised. And, I used and to would, look, would look, obviously, through every book in the yes, library for some more pictures. I like to think there's some kid now going into libraries, <laughs> getting your play loot, and pasting a picture of Lady Lewisham over oh, you. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that, the, the now, prison library must six be months for doing it, you know. <laughs> but why did he get six months for just this sitting on thing? Well, I didn't do it just on one book. I did it on hundreds of books. Oh! <laughs> you know, I saw Joe's play, The Loot, and it is one of the funniest plays I've seen. I just adored it. Laughed. I laughed so much that the people around me moved away. <laughs> really, I did. I haven't seen it yet, but I understand oh, that you, you get your laughs from a corpse, a coffin, a funeral. No, but the way you right? say it sounds terrible. Mm, but there yeah. are lots of other things as well. It's much funnier than what you make it sound. Yes, yes. yes. You, uh, well, I know. I'm not, I don't mean to say it in that way, but you, you, had, you had some <laughs> trouble, hadn't you, casting it? There were a lot of actors that didn't want to be part of it. Oh, yes, we, we had a lot of trouble. I mean, actors just read it, and it dropped from their nerveless fingers, and they said things like, we don't want be associated with this kind of play, you know. Um, but th they're always doing that. I mean, my first play, which is Entertaining Mr. Sloan, we had difficulty with that. And um, actually, it ran 13 performances on Broadway. It had a six-month run here, but on Broadway it only ran 13 performances because the Americans nearly dropped dead at it. Yeah, but, but this one, you've, you've had, you had trouble before you came into London with audiences as well, hadn't you? Oh, well, yes, because people said, I mean, we, we were at Bournemouth and um, one usherette was reported as saying that it was unnecessarily filthy, as if there really was a necessary amount of filth. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, people used to walk out, at Bournemouth this was, and sometimes you couldn't hear the dialogue for the slamming of the seat. <laughs> and what, what, what about the Lord Chamberlain? You had to battle with him as well, the censors. Yes, um, he wouldn't allow certain things um, originally. I mean, he said, no, you can't have this, can't have that. Of the other. There's a description actually, not a description, it's just um, a line of where a, a boy is supposed to have a girl under a picture 
of the Sacred Heart. And the Lord Chamberlain said, you cannot have the Sacred Heart, but you can have the Infant Samuel. <laughs> so we now say the Infant Samuel. Isn't it fantastic, though, <laughs> that the theatre, which is supposed to be for the discriminating, sophisticated audience, the Lord Chamberlain makes that deletion or substitution in your play, but there's nothing to stop you saying it on television for a complete cross-section of an audience. Well, how oh, do yes, know? it does in America. It well, does. not here. He just said it. Well, he just got out there. You know, nobody has <laughs> a chance don't, to stop him. Don't, 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 you, <laughs> yes, yes. don't be too sure. Don't be too sure. Don't you hear all those slamming seats <laughs> out there? <laughs> do you know, I'm sort of upset now that I liked it so much. It must be a bit peculiar. <laughs> <laughs> what what <laughs> other people have liked it? We, we were talking, uh, as you heard, I'm sure, Joe, before we came on, about marriage, obviously, with Bernie and Barbara here. Uh, one of the things you debunk, in a way, in this play, in fact, is marriage. Now, you were married once yourself, weren't mm. you? How old were you then? Twenty. Twenty. Um, and it didn't work out, mm. obviously. Mm. Do, you, do you think if you'd stayed married that you would, would, would have been a successful have, writer? Oh, not really. I mean, um, not the kind of writer I am, because I always agree with Shaw, who said that a married man with children was capable of anything. And, um, Even good writing. Uh, <laughs> yes, but not, play, not plays like Lute, I don't think. Do you, do you think then, then, that, that it's uh, difficult to have a successful marriage and be a writer? Or difficult to have a successful marriage, question? Well, I don't think it's difficult to have a successful marriage, but I think there are some oh, things... Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, lots of people. I mean, you get a lot of people, rubbish talk about it in the press and that, but a lot of people have successful marriages. Of course they well, do. Well, we've got one here, but Barbara was nodding her head there. You have two here. You dropped yeah, me. Two. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I was <laughs> <laughs> 25. I didn't about that. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be picked up again very quickly, I, I promise so. you, Ava. <laughs> But, but more and more, and not necessarily people like Joe, are, are debunking marriage. They're saying it's an outmoded convention. Uh, well, you, Barbara, what, what, what are well, you nodding about? No, just to go back to what Joe said, I think I, I would have agreed with Joe that to, to write the kind of plays that he writes, it would have been impossible to have a happy marriage. And I think that for anybody creative, it must be difficult mm. to have two equal human beings living <coughs> together because... Uh, the nature of creation means you've got to have your own times to do things. You've got to be selfish. Uh, what is regarded as selfish by the partner, wouldn't you mm. say? Well, also, you know, I think in, in some things, it's the fact that, I mean, since I, not so much with Sloan, but certainly with Lute, <laughs> since Lute has been on, I've lo had a lot of offers to do all sorts of things, mm. which, if I had a wife and kids, mm. I would have to take. Whereas, I mean, I don't have to take them, and I can wait until the... Um, the right thing comes along, you know. Well, yeah, you but it's, it's nonsense to say that, that, that no successful <coughs> writers have been happily married. Well, this is the implication. No, I never said that. Though Shakespeare wasn't very successfully married. Yeah, well, he wrote very successfully. Hmm. Well, I don't I know. Think, I, think it's, I think it's more difficult. I think, there, I think Joe's right that you have to compromise mm. more. I mean, I, can I, ask, I know ask. Bernie, you know, has to do all kinds of things, and so do I. <laughs> well, I must yeah, say, really? I, I don't agree with that at all. Of course, it did take me some time to get there, but I am married now seven years. I couldn't be happier. My husband is vice president of a studio, which requires an awful lot of work, and I'm an actress who has a television series, which means I work all the time, and we have the most beautiful married life in the world. And I don't feel we compromise. Now, Is if you read about the <laughs> divorce, then I mean, I may be bad luck to say that. But, Barbara, you, you, you were nodding ahead earlier, and I was wondering about what? I mean, do, do you s subscribe at all to the kind of views that are being put forward that marriage itself is outmoded. It keeps getting knocked. Sorry, sorry, you cannot generalize on this kind of thing. I'm That's not going right. to talk for anybody else, for goodness sakes. Yeah. You know, I am saying that uh, if I were now 17, if it didn't offend Bernie's parents, if it hadn't offended my parents, if it hadn't given unnecessary hurt to anybody, I would have preferred to live with Bernie for a while rather than go through the formal marriage. Uh, but because but, but would, you, would you have had children without the protection of the marriage contract? Oh, yes. You would? Oh, yes. But you would have put oh, yeah. their children in a very bad position. Exactly. So this is they why we got married. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then, you know. <laughs> right. So, what we're, you know, but, uh, the law. What exactly. we're really talking about, I think, is that there is a rather obscene attitude to divorce on the part of both the church and the law. The church says, or at least the Bible says, if you commit adultery, you have sinned. And the law says, if you want a divorce, you have to commit adultery. <laughs> <laughs> and this seems to me, what, you know, to base both marriage and divorce on sex, which, <coughs> while it's one of the nicest parts of marriage, isn't necessarily <laughs> the best. Well, you don't. What makes a marriage? Surely you don't have to, um, to sort of uh, commit adultery. You can always knock her teeth in or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's it's cheaper. Yeah, but to adultery, <laughs> no, but you see, the point painful. is, that's the point painful. is that if if she commits adultery, you knock her around a bit. You don't divorce her. 
See, there's no point. Because of being married is like being a baby and always and having to play with the same rattle always. Isn't it? You are disappointed in but marriage. Isn't. I can see that. It no, but, isn't like but that do, you, do you think that if if you had done, <laughs> say, You're with me, I'm a rattle. <laughs> <laughs> if you had done what Barbara suggested there, supposing you'd lived together and had your family and not been been married, do you think it had lasted 25 years without a formal marriage? I couldn't, I couldn't say. at this couldn't stage have. say. Couldn't All have, I could darling. say at this stage is that at that time, uh, we'd have had to get married because my father was a clergyman. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit tricky situation. Uh -huh. And uh, your parents were fairly strong on marriage at that time, too. <laughs> so if the conventions are changing, you know, maybe people can be easier, freer about so you, it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said that it was wrong to be freer about it. So I wouldn't you, make my kids. Yeah. I would insist that they so, so you, 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 you basically convention would force you into marriage or force you into marriage. This is a well, love could also. Oh, sure, to, but then yeah. why hurt? To, you know, it's, you're brought up a certain way. And you just but you can always it, have sort of a trial honeymoon that goes on for <coughs> sort of several years if necessary. But you, you see, that could end. never last. I am sure but, it can't. No, it can't last because it's so easy to pack up your clothes and say goodbye, darling. Now, if you have to go and divide everything you earn, like we do in California, you think it over immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Ava, when, each time you were married, did you say to yourself, uh, well, this is the man I'm going to spend, the, apart from that half time, uh, this is the man I'm going to spend the rest of my life with, or did you just hope well, for the best? Well, the other two weren't too hot either. <laughs> it's the only man who really ever was in marriage. This man I'm married to now, and we uh, married now seven and a half years, and it's just delicious. And I really am very much against living in sin. I said that before. It's you just don't belong, and I'm a person who has to belong. Well, it all depends you know? what you mean in sin, of course. Mm. Well, well, I don't if you, believe it's <laughs> and if you don't believe it's a sin, then, exactly. then, then you know. Then what's yes, well, about? I do believe it's oh, in sin. Oh, but that's because probably you were brought up to believe it's in yeah, sin. Yeah, but I don't you? mind the way I was brought up. No, I but you believe you know? it's in sin. I mean, you got how many times were you married? Mario, you're going to pick on me too. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and I spoke so nicely about your play. <coughs> Not very nice of you. No, I don't really mind, but I mean, if you're, if you're going to sort of get divorced, why not just live with the man? You know? Well, you see, because I have to go back to the same thing, I don't like to live in sin. Yeah. But then I like course, to be proper. But then, <laughs> let's face it, a lot of people would consider being married once three but times. That's a sin they too. would consider that sinful too, so you've got to make your own rules, don't yes, you? Yes, you do. You don't mm. regard that as sinful, and you're right. Nobody's yeah. going to force you to do it. I think you should sort of decide for yourself. I don't that's think you should be told. That's what I've done. You know? But if you, don't, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't go into marriage believing it's going to last, uh, I'm sure we'd never have been at that party last night. It wouldn't no, have lasted 25. We didn't believe it was going to last when we got married. Neither of us believed it was going to last. The point is, and, and you know, I think Mom should make a point for marriage here. Uh, <laughs> the point is that it's because you are married that you things happen in adversity. To me, for example, there may come a moment in every marriage when you learn that a child of yours has been in an accident and you go to the nursing home or the hospital and you are waiting for the doctor to come out and there's a moment when you lock eyes for mutual reassurance and that moment is as <laughs> intimate as anything that ever happens to you in bed and in fact it may add to the intimacy of what you share in bed from then on and marriage whether it's within the law within the church or not is really that kind of being together and growing together well, it certainly has to do with children. That's what the for better or for worse. Yeah, it has to That's do, it. For us, it had to do with children. Because, you know, with all the tensions that we have in show business, you know, they talk about show business, marriages, and all that. Well, you know, either we're so boring or lazy or un uninteresting, we're still together. But I think one of the reasons is that because of the kids, quite honestly. You know, that you do try that much harder. Well, Bernie, what do you think is the best quality, a serious question, that a wife can have? Um. Watch it. <laughs> oh boy, are you going to be in trouble? Whatever, whatever, whatever you, you say. say, whatever you I say. I think I already said it earlier on. I think for me, the best quality that a wife can have is the ability to always surprise you. Just when you think you've got her tape, you know how she's going to react. She surprises you, and she still does that for me. That's a nice answer, Barbara. Let me ask you then. Yeah. After 25 years, how would you? sum up your feelings about the guy that you married 25 years ago. Amazement? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't, let me sum it up. Uh, uh, he's handsome. Oh boy. He's the most handsome man I've ever met in my life. The best singer I've ever met. Uh, the best father of my children that I've ever had. I'm glad to have it finally confirmed. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> oh, no, no. That's your story. That's our story. Not what I mean, but no, what you mean about surprising you, Bernie, yeah? You've been surprised again. That's it, yeah. Great. So have I. Marvelous. I'm going to leave it at that. All oh, right. I enjoyed that. It's, it's, it's time to say our thanks to Vicky Carr and the Bachelors. It's good night, Ava Gabor. Good night. Barbara Kelly, Bernard Braden, Joe Orton. Many thanks. We'll have more Sunday Night People next Sunday night. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>